the West food drive was hosted by several church groups with enough supplies to feed 500 families. Plus, a Waipahu church held a food distribution, but this one wasn't a drive through pickup. Volunteers picked up the boxes over at West Oahu Christian Church and then drove it to 350 low-income families and seniors in Waipahu and Kapolei. Now, it's meant for people who don't have a car. Waipahu Safe Haven Immigrant Resource Center and the Salvation Army supported that event. And KITV4 is partnering with Helping Hands Hawaii to assist families impacted by COVID-19 by launching a giving campaign to raise funds for grocery store gift cards for families in need. Go to KITV.com slash give for more information. And our Living Room Live Aloha Together concert series airs at a new time and channel tonight. You can catch performances from artists like Kamuela Kahoano, pa Paula Fuga, and Mike Love at 5 o'clock on MeTV. So far, the series has helped raise more than $50,000 for various local agencies. Thank you so much for that support. This week, we partnered with Helping Hands Hawaii. And funds raised will go towards our Ho'okopu uh, campaign to buy grocery store gift cards for families impacted by the COVID-19 layoffs. Again, that's tonight at 5 on MeTV. And just a reminder for you, KITV is celebrating the people of Hawaii who, without, uh, who are banding together to support one another during these tough times. You can share their stories with us so we can feature them on air and online. Love to hear those stories. All you have to do to nominate somebody, just go to KITV.com slash Naumea for more information. All right, lots of good ways to uh, give and give back, so thanks for that. Love it. This morning's top stories and a full hour of Island News starts right now. Now, from KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now on Good Morning Hawaii, a police officer is fired and another taken off the streets after a black man in Atlanta was killed on Friday. Plus, calls for justice are taking shape locally as well. An Oahu woman claims her brother died following a fight with Honolulu police. It just doesn't belong here. They're going to have to find a new place for it. And not in their backyard, hear what else residents are saying about a planned affordable housing development in their Kailua neighborhood. Good morning, Hawaii. A lot to get to this morning. Happy Sunday. Thanks for joining us for Hawaii's only weekend morning newscast. I'm Tom George. Aloha, Kakahiaka. I'm Annalisa Burgos. First, we begin with the continuing surge in coronavirus cases. The Department of Health is reporting 17 new cases all on Oahu. One case involves a minor, while two people required hospitalization. This is the second day in a row we've seen double-digit increases. The state epidemiologist says this was expected with the reopening of activities activities and businesses and since the pandemic began Hawaii's reported 723 infections 628 people have recovered 17 people have died and two of those new cases are part of a household cluster in Waipahu where 12 people so far have now tested positive now as we reported Friday 15 people who live in a two-bedroom home are part of that cluster some 300 residents and surrounding households were tested as part of community screening all tested negative except for those in that single household and if you're looking for a place to exercise this morning, head over to Kalakaua Avenue. The city and county of Honolulu is giving Kama'aina the run of a place that usually is overrun by tourists. Open Street Sundays began uh, at 6 o'clock this morning. It goes till noon in Waikiki. Kalakaua Avenue is close to drivers from Seaside to Kapahulu Avenues. Foot traffic, bikes, skateboards, uh, even rollerblades and those little scooters everyone likes. Those are all welcome, and everyone is encouraged to support the local businesses that are struggling due to a drop in tourism. Now, the road, like I said, will be closed till noon, and you can actually find me and Mayor Kirk Caldwell biking down there after the show, so join us. <laughs> I mean, it's worth it just to see Annalisa Burgos uh, biking with uh, Mayor Caldwell, <laughs> if, if for nothing else. All right, well, uh, to build or not to build, that's the question that's polarizing Kailua residents after a plan to build a four-story low-income housing development hit the neighborhood board. KTB4's TJ Horgan talked with residents whose homes would be knocked down if this goes through. Bretta Pedro's lived in his home here on Kavainui Street for 34 years and told me the coconut wireless is how he heard it might be getting torn down. Uh, they kind of went beat around the bush. Kind of just trying to like push us out without giving us an actual heads up about what's really going to happen. 
And if they're going to take care of the families that's already here? The affordable housing apartment complex would take care of many residents, say developers Ahe Group. So being a resident here, I would like to live somewhere that's affordable, that's not in a multi-generational home, you know, but still close enough to be with my ohana. Seven houses right now stand on the one-acre lot the apartment building would occupy. Pedro said he can't support it when his ohana wasn't even offered a spot in the building. As far as giving the family an opportunity to be able to uh, benefit from this apartment building, that was out of the question. They didn't offer anything. Another point of contention, what a 73-unit building offering only 53 parking stalls would add to the bottleneck. Okay, so the parking ain't all that great. If you can see, the street is already taken by the residents that live here. And then you have the businesses on other blocks that park here and then go and walk over to their businesses because there's no parking structure for them to park at. Ahe Group states monthly rent would range from just over $500 to $1,400. The website also says they expect construction to be completed by the end of 2021. Right now is not a good time to be kicking people out of the house, especially through a, a pandemic, you know what I mean? Where would you go if they kicked you out of here? I'll be on the streets, guarantee I'll be on the streets, guarantee. TJ Horgan, KITV4 Island News. Well, the search is on for a missing fisherman off the Big Island. The Coast Guard and Fire Department have crews in the air and out at sea looking for 47-year-old Mark Lowry. He went missing two and a half miles northeast of Punalu'u Beach. Lowry was camping with friends who said he stayed up overnight to go fishing. Yesterday, the friends woke up and realized Lowry was missing, and so were his backpack and several fishing rods. He was last seen at 10 p.m. Friday wearing a black hoodie, sweatshirt, tan shorts, and a headlamp. If you have any information about this case, call the Coast Guard at 808-842-2600. Well, it's been a dangerous week on the Big Island. In the last week, there were ocean searches for two other men. Fire crews found the body of a fisherman reported missing Monday night. Crews responded to the scene off Puuhonua Road in Captain Cook the following evening. Now, that person has not yet been identified. For two days, crews also searched for missing 20-year-old Malcolm Davis. He was last seen spearfishing with a group of friends in waters off of Mahukona Tuesday morning. They suspended the search without finding him. Well, rioters are taking to the streets after a man was fatally shot by police in Atlanta, setting fire to the fast food restaurant where it all happened. Now, the man's struggle with police and the shooting are all caught on camera. Janae Norman has more on the fast-moving development since then. On the heels of weeks of unrest, demonstrators gathering overnight in Atlanta over the fatal shooting of 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks. Police deploying tear gas as demonstrators shut down a highway and even setting this Wendy's, the site of the incident, on fire. The Brooks family attorney speaking out about Rayshard's death. Before we even get into what happened last night, the one thing that nobody can disagree with is that it shouldn't have happened. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation is looking into the deadly incident that started at the restaurant after police responded to a call about Brooks who was allegedly asleep in his car blocking the drive through lane. Newly released police body cam footage shows Brooks perform several sobriety tests. Will you take a preliminary breath test for me? Just a yes or no. I don't want to refuse anything. Brooks reportedly failed. Officers claim he resisted arrest before a struggle ensued. Then police say Brooks grabs one of the officer's tasers. In this new video posted to social media by a witness, Brooks is seen running from police, appearing to point the taser at the officers. Then the GBI says officers fired three gunshots. Brooks's family outraged by the video. He wasn't out here committing crimes. He wasn't out here burglarizing, robbing somebody. He wasn't doing all that. That what hurts us more, too, is the fact that we know this. So was his life worth taking? The firing officer, Garrett Wolf was terminated overnight. The other officer, Devin Brosnan, placed on administrative duty. This as Atlanta's mayor announced the resignation of police chief Erica Shields. Shields saying in a statement, it's time for the city to move forward and build trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve. The Georgia NAACP says Atlanta's police chief resigning is just one step forward. It's so important now because people are dying now. We don't have the luxury of waiting. 
And Brooks's death comes amid nationwide calls for police reform in cases of excessive force. We have seen swift action in this case, the police chief resigning and that officer fired all within about 24 hours. Janae Norman, ABC News, Essex County, New Jersey. And here at home, renewed calls for justice for a man who died last July after an altercation with Honolulu police. His family believes he was a victim of brutality. KITV4's Eddie Dowd explains why they believe the events following the death of George Floyd have increased support for their cause. Michelle Boutet says she's been trying to get answers into an incident with police where her brother allegedly became unresponsive and later died at the hospital. I just want justice for my brother and his three boys that is never going to get a chance to be raised by their dad. On Saturday, dozens of family members and friends joined her to wave signs and demand justice for Boutte. Some kind of dis discipline be done towards those officers that were there and doing whatever they were doing to him when he was on the ground. The Honolulu Police Department says it started when 40-year-old Boutte, who had multiple warrants, was seen in an illegal game room and took off when police approached him. According to HPD, after the officers caught Boutte, there was a struggle and pepper spray was discharged and he was transported to a hospital by ambulance. Witnesses saying that they were kicking him while he was on the ground. They were videotaping the, the officers trying to carry him into the car and at that time, his, that's when they saw his hands actually curling inwards. She believes officers used excessive force, which contributed to her brother's death. A spokesperson for HPD says the medical examiner ruled Boutte's death to be an accident. But his family says there's still questions about what happened. And they are now hoping the national spotlight on law enforcement will lead to more transparency from the department. I, I don't blame all the officers for that. I, I just want the ones that does do those type of things that should be... Something should be done about that. Eddie Dowd, KITV4, Island News. And take a look at this demonstration held Hawaii style. Yesterday, all these people gathered at Waimea Bay for a paddle out in honor of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement. According to the Post, the North Shore community sat on their boards in silence for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. That's the length of time it took for Floyd to lose his life. And uh, you see all those people out there paddling out. And this morning, there will be another paddle out. This one's going to be in Kailua. Anybody's welcome to join. Organizers are going to be meeting at the Kailua boat ramp at 8 o'clock. So you have a little bit of time to get out there. Mm -hmm. And also later today, demonstrators are planning to march in honor of Breonna Taylor. The 26-year-old EMT was fatally shot in her home by Kentucky police back in March. A growing online petition says officers performed an illegal drug raid before killing Taylor. She was not the suspect. Today's protest begins at Ala Moana at 1 o'clock and ends at the state capitol at 4. And as we saw, um, there was some action done. They got rid right. of that. The uh, no-knock no -knock warrants. So that was, uh, that was what was used in that case. So that's already changed in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, her hometown there. Yeah, so a lot of people acting upon all of these protests. Well, time, time now, 7, 10 a.m. Protesters are demanding change in the wake of George Floyd's death and countless others. Yeah, we'll show you how the unrest and the growing tension now has some police departments abandoning their headquarters and what the plan is next. Time now, 7-11. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. More news and weather coming up on your Sunday. Stay with us. We're here for you, and we're open. I'm original, one of a kind. You feel me? Ooh. Love you. You look cute. Better than you. Pop my 100% all-white meat classic or spicy popcorn chicken combo, only a Jack in the Box. Marco Polo! Marco Polo! Marco Polo! Marco Polo! Marco Polo! Si. <laughs> Marco Polo! Scusa! Polo! Marco Polo! Marco Polo! Playing Marco Polo with Marco Polo? Surprising. Ragazzi, io sono Marco Polo! What's not surprising? Geico helping you save even more on car and motorcycle insurance. Ah, Polo. Now get an extra 15% credit when you switch before October 7th. When you feel like Vegas, there's just one place to stay. Find it at the count. Grab a drink at the Holo Holo Bar. There's just one place to play. Find it at the count. We got a fresh hot look, a new sports book. We got those local meals, just like Auntie Cook's. Now at thecal.com. 
Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union continues to serve all your money needs, as we've done since 1936. Although conducting business with us has changed, our commitment to Hawaii and the community is steadfast as ever. Supporting great causes such as Show Aloha Challenge and Aloha Together is only a few ways we've contributed. But truly, this message is a heartfelt aloha to our dedicated staff who come to work daily to ensure that all account holders are taken care of. We appreciate you for life. We're here for you, and we're open. My new bite-sized crispy popcorn chicken is so irresistible, you'll want them whenever, so don't resist. Pop them while you game, hang, or do your thing. Pop my 100% all-white meat classic or spicy popcorn chicken combo, only a Jack in the Box. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Across the country, we're seeing a collective demand for police reform intensifying. Autonomous zones are emerging in a number of cities as protesters take over. Zachary Keish shows us how officers are retreating to de-escalate the tension. No Overnight, protesters took the streets in a march against police brutality. In the nation's capital, demonstrators blocked a highway. This is protesters in several cities are taking over certain areas, claiming them as autonomous zones, free of police control. In Nashville, Tennessee, demonstrators seizing the steps of the state capital. We're all together and fighting for the same thing, the eradication of racism in the United States. The group camping out, the governor threatening action. In Asheville, North Carolina, protesters attempted to block a freeway before officers moved in, tearing down barriers. And in Seattle, for days, demonstrators have surrounded this precinct. This building is the people's. You know, we pay for it with our taxes. The department surrendering the building after weeks of clashes. But as calls for police reform grow nationwide, another video made public appearing to show more excessive use of force. Hey, that's a second. Oh. Police officer. In Connecticut, New Haven police are seen violently throwing a handcuffed suspect to the ground earlier this year, kicking him and pulling his hair. Robert Fuller! Robert Fuller! Robert Fuller! In California, demonstrators demanding answers after a black man was found hanging in a tree in the city of Palmdale. The sheriff's department initially saying there was no foul play in Robert Fuller's death. But overnight, local officials requesting the state attorney general oversee an investigation into his death. Now, governors in states like New York and Colorado are attempting to make change. If you really want to be the progressive capital, you have to lead with action. Governor Andrew Cuomo giving a nine-month death Line for governments across the state of New York to come up with reforms or see their funds cut. Colorado is one of those states getting a lot of attention for their reforms. One of a number of changes that we'll see there is a ban on chokeholds. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. And changes being made here locally as well. I know we've heard from Honolulu Chief uh, Susan Ballard about, you know, uh, reducing the kinds of actions that they do when they're responding to calls. Yeah, and, and as, as you mentioned, there's going to be another rally uh, today, mm -hmm. this time for a Breonna Taylor and also a couple paddle outs this morning yeah. uh, in honor of George Floyd. So if you're heading out there, we want to get your forecast for you as you're waking up. So here's a live look outside right now, what things are looking at right now. Meanwhile, I'll have a full check on your weather coming up next. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. Keeping you safe and healthy. KITV4 Island News. Coming up on the next episode of Island Style, it's all about the story of giving back to our local communities and how you can help your friend, your neighbor, and the future generations of Hawaii. Plus, we're going to learn how educational programs are using technology in this new virtual teaching world. We also want to make sure that you get a little taste of music as we pay tribute to the class of 2020. That's Island Style this Saturday at 6.30 p.m. right here on Kiai TV. seconds to crispier, fluffier, Eggo homestyle waffles. We are go for Lift. Now that they're crispier and fluffier. I think this one's a solo mission. I understand. Would you Lego your Eggo?
Introducing new Voltaren Arthritis Pain Gel, the first and only full prescription strength non-steroidal anti-inflammatory gel available over the counter. New Voltaren is powerful arthritis pain relief in a gel. Voltaren, the joy of movement. Whether you're a professional or a weekend warrior, you are only as good as your clubs. Come visit us at Pro-Am Golf. Check out our new PXG fitting suite that will match you up perfectly with the right set of clubs, not to mention personal instructors to help perfect your technique. We are the largest locally owned dealer of golf equipment in Hawaii. With competitive pricing, selection, and Hawaii's only repair shop open seven days a week, we are sure you won't want to go anywhere else than Pro-Am Golf. At Crime Stoppers, we are still here to help during these trying times. Pulling together and continuing to keep our community safe. Please stay vigilant and watching out for one another and our neighborhoods. Together, we'll get through this and come out stronger. From our Crime Stoppers family to yours, please take care, stay safe, and stay healthy. Mahalo. All right, welcome back. Happy Sunday. Hopefully you're having a good weekend. If you're uh, planning on heading outside today, going to be a nice day to do it. You see right now, 77 degrees, sun started to peak out, perfect weather. The big story of the day, though, is going to be the winds. You can see uh, pretty calm right now, 13 uh, in Honolulu, 9 to 14 right now over on the windward side, but it could pick up a little bit, uh, expecting could get pretty gusty up to 15 to 25 miles per hour. So going to be pretty sunny, but those winds will help uh, cool things down a little bit. Satellite and radar right now, you see not too much going on right now as we go through your uh, satellite right there. Current temperatures, hottest we're seeing right now over on the windward side, 84 in Kaneohe. So gonna, gonna warm up a little bit today, but again, that wind is gonna keep things a little bit cooler as you're heading outside. So here's a look at what your forecast is gonna look like for today, eight o'clock, a few passing rains on the windward and Malka side, but then mostly sunny. But again, that big, uh, sorry, the wind, east northeast, 15 to 25 miles per hour. So it's gonna be hot, but that winds will cool it down. It's also gonna make things a little bit choppier. So heads up if you're heading out surfing, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful heading into your afternoon, sunny and nice, mostly dry, doesn't get much better than that. So a perfect day to go hiking, get out there and enjoy the water, whatever you wanna do. Hopefully you have a nice Sunday fun day. For now, we'll send it over to Cody for sports. Two seconds into round one with a stone cold knockout. Tyson Nam got his first ever UFC victory in their first post COVID return to Sin City, held at the UFC training facility called the Apex. Winner by KO out of Hawaii, Tyson Nam! A 36 year old UH grad that never gave up on the UFC dream. So after starting his UFC career 0-2, the Wadanalo native made easy work of Zaruk Adeshev. And of his 19 MMA victories that date all the way back to 2006, 11 of those have come by either KO or TKO. And after 90 days, the PGA has returned to play as the first round of the Charles Schwab Challenge got underway Thursday. Although with no fans, but a great group of golfers that all tested negative for the coronavirus, as that was the main requirement before they could even make their way to Fort Worth, Texas. And right in the mix coming into Sunday is Colin Morikawa, whose grandparents, they used to own a restaurant on Maui, and now his family all over Oahu that were out here in droves when he played here five months ago. About Marikawa, one of the best iron players on the tour. He was the leader after round one of the Sony Open here at Wildlife Country Club. And after three rounds of the Charles Schwab Challenge, he sits at 12 under and just one stroke back of the leader. As there is a five-way tie for second that includes some of the games. When it comes to Major League Baseball, there is a lot of frustration going on from the owners to the players, but mostly the fan base. As yet another rejected proposal came out yesterday for a post-COVID return. And later today, we're going to hear from Kawhi Zone Kirby Yates is that 2019 All-Star was hoping to make a case for a big new contract as he only has a one-year deal right now with the Padres. It's going to expire after the season. Cody Crump, can't be for Island Sports. KITV4 Island News, honored with the Edward R. Murrow Award for breaking news. My mom was never homeless, but she certainly came close many times because her mental illness prevented her from getting stable income. I was 10 years old when she left the family. I've seen the effects of mental illness 
up close and personal. As mayor, I will increase the mental health and drug treatment for those who are out on the streets. I'll wake up every morning with a fire in my belly to address our homelessness issue. That's something that I hold near and dear to my heart. They are the heroes, the helpers, working on the front lines. And here's one small way that you can help them in return. Complete your 2020 census today. 2020 census data helps our community plan funding for hospitals, clinics, and emergency services across Hawaii. An accurate count helps public health officials know who is at risk, and first responders identify the resources they need to protect our communities. Complete your census at 2020census.gov and help shape our future. Paid for by U.S. Census Bureau. Let's get real. Did you know Price Clubs only offer tire balancing and not alignments? Well, what's the difference? Tire balancing adjusts wheel weights to help eliminate vibrations. A wheel alignment adjusts the suspension system, helping your vehicle to drive straight and extend tire life. When buying new tires, it makes no sense to not have your vehicle aligned. Lex Brody's price matches the Price Club's tires and offers free alignment inspections. Lex just keeping it real. When you need tires, visit LexBrody's.com. And thank you very much. Need something? Try Check City Mill. CityMill.com makes researching and buying what you need so much easier. Buy online, choose a store most convenient for you, then pick up two business hours later. It's that easy. Can't find it online? We take phone orders too. And we've got curbside pickup, so you don't need to leave your car. Need something? Try Check City Mill and CityMill.com. This segment of KITV4 Island News is sponsored by City Mill. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Now to the big announcement from Bachelor Nation. For the first time ever, the upcoming season's new Bachelor is black. Janae Norman explains why it's a big step forward for a show that's been criticized for its lack of diversity. Our next Bachelor, Peter. Ben Higgins. Juan Pablo. It's the show where suitors search for love. The Bachelor, a ratings hit since this premiere nearly two decades ago. Will you marry me? Yes. But throughout its 18-year history, one thing has remained the same. Not a single Bachelor chosen to lead the franchise has ever been a black man. That lack of representation has not gone unnoticed, called out by both fans and former stars of the series. Especially when you break down the numbers, 40 seasons, 18 years, one lead of color. The Bachelorette's Rachel Lindsay, the only black person in 40 seasons to ever have one season devoted to her, has been a vocal critic since appearing on the show three years ago saying it is long past due for a diversity makeover. And I was hoping when I came on to be a trailblazer for that and to increase diversity in, in the audience that watches it. But in the last three years, there really haven't been changes made. The show's lack of diversity has been called out before, including recently in a change.org petition with nearly 85,000 signatures. Now the show is attempting to turn the page, announcing that at long last, a black man will lead the franchise, choosing 28-year-old Matt James, originally cast as a suitor on Bachelorette Claire's current season. James is also pals with famous Bachelor alums Tyler Cameron and Hannah Brown. Rachel Lindsay says that while picking James is a start, there's still much more work to be done. I want producers of color. I would like for them to cast leads that are interested in dating outside of their race and aren't just getting their first first time experience for the first time on national TV. I need the acknowledgement of that. Not putting a band-aid over the situation and just saying, here, we're going to put this here. Are you happy now? So with James at the helm, the question now, will this be a true turning point for the franchise, one where inclusion and diversity are made a priority? Josiah, will you accept this for us? Absolutely. The president of ABC Entertainment promising this is just the beginning, saying we know we have a responsibility to make sure the love stories we're seeing on screen are representative of the world we live in, and we will continue to take action with regard to diversity issues on this franchise. We feel so privileged to have Matt as our first black bachelor, and we cannot wait to embark on this journey with him. 
Yeah, and of course, uh, Rachel, the bachelorette from that story, she's uh, still going strong with uh, the guy that she picked to be her husband. So, uh, And that airs right here on ABC as well, so we'll be sure and uh, be watching that. And new this morning, the group behind the Oscars says it has a plan to make the awards more inclusive. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences designated an office to oversee that plan. Phase one of that initiative will be focusing on governance, membership, and workplace culture. The Academy and the Producers Guild of America also plan to develop inclusive industry standards. Those changes come after years of criticism that the Oscars are dominated by Caucasians and men. And I remember uh, earlier this year when we talked about it, we had uh, Amy Hill, our local right. actress. Right, and, uh, and, and she correctly predicted that uh, Parasite would be kind of the game changer this yeah. year. And of course, it was the first um, South Korean film to, mm -hmm. to win a uh, Best Picture. So yeah. already starting to see some changes there. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, well, uh, time now, 727, your top morning headlines coming up. We'll be right back. Welcome to Ali'i Animal Resort. I'm Matt Malta, Resort Director. Our veterinary care team oversees playtime in doggy daycare, grooming, and all overnight stays. Ali'i Animal, helping pets live their best life. Visit ali'ianimal.com. Aloha, I'm Bob Fitzgerald, also known as Coach. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Michaela. We're here asking for your support and vote to be the next mayor of Hawaii Island. Coach Fitzgerald's leadership has meant so much to me in my life. I'm excited to see what he can do for the whole island. Thank you for running, Coach. I will use my experience and leadership and listen to all our community needs, bridge them together, and get the job done. One island, one heart. Mahalo. I'm Bob Fitzgerald, and I approve this message. In order to address the growing concern over COVID-19, Pestec Hawaii will be mobilizing more disinfection teams to help keep Hawaii virus free. We disinfect homes, offices, and public gathering areas, and we look forward to working with you to help keep our community safe. Feel like getting back out there? Nissan is ready to help you with a bold award-winning lineup and great offers. Kick off summer with a low $179 per month lease on Nissan Sentra. Or get no payments for three months. Plus, we'll cover your payments for up to two more months. Hawaii, staying strong. And we do have breaking news if you're just tuning in. Arming you with information. Mika Miyashima and Brenton Owai. Reporting from across Hawaii. We are reporting live from the base camp on Mauna Kids. This is the team you trust. We're here whenever you need us. When it matters most. We're back in three, two. And we thank you. KITV4 Island News. Now, from KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now in Good Morning Hawaii, another tragedy strikes a family that's already grieving. Plus, the nation is definitely not out of the woods as nearly two dozen states report a surge in coronavirus cases. Meanwhile, hotel workers tired of the shutdown are taken to the streets demanding safe hotels for a safe Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now, 7.30 a.m. Summer officially starts next week, but the coronavirus is not taking a vacation. Yeah, CDC officials are warning this pandemic is far from over. It's a sentiment that's being echoed by the World Health Organization and top Harvard doctors. Those academics say the U.S. death toll could actually hit 200,000 by September. As Nick Watt explains, hospitalizations in the country are on the rise. We're truly concerned, actually, because... Um, the world is divided. Today's message from the World Health Organization, we must all be in this together. And in a rare telephone briefing, the CDC laying out what individuals now should and shouldn't do. The greater the number of people involved in the interaction, the higher the risk of COVID-19 spread. Today in Houston, they're prepping to reopen not more businesses, but maybe the field hospital at the Texans NRG Stadium. COVID-19 hospitalization rates in Texas just hit an all-time high. I'm growing increasingly concerned that we may be approaching the precipice, the precipice of a disaster. Oregon and Utah have hit pause on reopening following upticks these past couple of weeks. 
if things continue on the current trend, uh, we're going to lose 20 to 30,000 Americans a month. Uh, and nothing in the foreseeable future stops that uh, unless we really do things differently. New case counts right now rising in 19 states. Florida's average new case count has about doubled since June 1st. As you're testing more, you're going to find more cases. But he admits there are new outbreaks in farming communities. A small part of it is testing, but it truly is a real increase in cases. And uh, part of that is because people are getting too close together without using their masks. Meanwhile, some vaccine experts concerned that President Trump will speed up a vaccine for political purposes, now asking the FDA to require at least 30,000 strong human trials before approval. And that promising vaccine being developed in Oxford, England, has now entered phase three with 42,000 subjects expected to take part. Everyone is waiting for a vaccine because it's clear that uh, a vaccine would be the best way out of this pandemic. Movie showings inside theaters and movie production can begin again today here in Los Angeles. Missouri, scene of that infamous Memorial Day pool party, will lift all statewide restrictions next week. And that was Nick Watt reporting. The spike in cases has states such as Utah, Oregon, and Arizona either slowing down or completely pausing their plans to reopen. Well, meantime, 115,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention predicts that number could go up another 25,000 by the 4th of July holiday. It published new guidelines this weekend urging people to wear masks and saying the places with the highest risk are large in-person gatherings where attendees travel from outside the local area. This will end. It will end with a combination of public health measures and ultimately science coming in and getting durable solutions such as treatments and vaccines. Well, the new guidelines come amid continued protests following the death of George Floyd and news that President Donald Trump plans to hold a campaign rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That arena holds 19,000 people. The county is seeing a spike in cases and local officials are worried that the rally will only make it worse. And in Texas, Catherine Boswell and Samantha Garcia protested in Dallas. They say they were wearing masks, gloves, and eye protection, but they both ended up testing positive anyway. You could just think you have allergies because you're going outside, but you could be spreading a virus. And, and that's my biggest thing is it's like we have to still take care of each other. Now, both of those women there are 25 years old, and that's part of a trend that doctors have been noticing in Texas. The average age of patients has been dropping, and summer isn't helping. One thing that I had hoped for, as I think many did, many did, was that the weather, the warmer weather, was going to slow down the virus, and that clearly does not seem to be the case. Now, meanwhile, college athletes returning to campus at more than a dozen schools have now tested positive as well, including 10 at the University of Iowa, and the University of Houston has suspended voluntary workouts after six of their athletes tested positive too. And new this morning, some scientists are concerned about the coronavirus mutating. Analysts at the Scripps Research Institute say a mutation they've discovered affects the spike protein. That's the outer coating of the virus that it uses to get into cells. The change could make it easier for the virus to infect human cells. More research is needed, but some experts worry this could alter how the pandemic plays out. The World Health Organization says mutations discovered so far would not affect the effectiveness of of vaccines now in development. And a check on our numbers here in Hawaii. The Department of Health is reporting 17 new cases all on Oahu. One case involves a minor, while two people required hospitalization. Now, this is the second day in a row we've seen double-digit increases. You can compare those numbers to areas doing far worse. Cases are also rising in 22 other states and Puerto Rico. In fact, in Florida over the last 10 days, they've seen actually averaging more than 1,000 new cases a day. In Arizona, a similar story, an average of, of 1,000 new cases a day. It was under 400 a day before the shutdown was lifted a month ago.
Well, safe hotels, safe Hawaii. That's the message a large caravan took around Maui yesterday. Unite Here Local 5 organized the event, demanding that the tourism industry and elected leaders reopen Hawaii's hospitality industry safely. Of course, that's been a big question is when will we reopen? Nearly 100 cars with Local 5 members drove that route. Two weeks ago, Unite Here Local 5 organized another caravan, that one through Waikiki, with the same message. Well, more tragedy for the family of slain Honolulu police officer Kaulike Kalama. Just months after Officer Kalama was killed in the line of fire at Diamond Head in January, his wife has passed away. She died yesterday afternoon. Their pastor, Wayne Surface, says 34-year-old Kaohinani Kalama passed away as a result of an ongoing medical condition. They were married for 12 years. Now he says, quote, we praise God. She is once again united with the love of her life, but we will truly miss her. We appreciate your prayers for her family, especially their son, Kaumana, as they endure this loss so soon after the tragic passing of Kaulike. Condolences may be sent to Ohana Baptist Church, or you may leave a message on a page that they set up on Facebook. That information you can find on KITV.com, and we want to send our condolences out to their family as well. And meantime, we now know the name of the man killed in a fatal traffic crash Thursday morning. The medical examiner identified him as 54-year-old James Lapinad of Waimanalo. Police say he was driving his moped when he lost control and hit a concrete median. He was thrown onto the road and died at the scene. This is the 20th traffic fatality of this year compared to 27 at the same time last year. And breaking news just into our KITV4 newsroom, Honolulu police are at the scene of a crash on Waianae Valley Road. A viewer sent us this video and says this Toyota truck hit a pole and a fire hydrant, turning the hydrant into a geyser. You can see that there. HPD says the crash happened just before 6 a.m. There's no word on how that driver is doing, and we'll bring you updates on air and online as soon as we learn more. Well, meanwhile, now to what's happening at a number of colleges across the nation right now. Students are demanding that changes plantation people ask questions like um, when do we stop taking the names off of buildings at universities and my response to that of course is when there aren't any that are named for slaveholders others stepping up and calling for change at Texas University as well a group of nearly 40 student athletes have written a letter calling for sweeping changes including renaming several buildings on campus and replacing the school song the eyes of Texas a song that was once performed by white performers singing in blackface. At Liberty University in Virginia, basketball star Asia Todd says ongoing racial insensities have led her to transfer. It simply does not align with my moral compass or personal conviction. Her announcement coming after the president of the Christian University, Jerry Falwell, in a sense-deleted tweet, called out Virginia's governor to make a political point. Thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that story. And of course, we're seeing a lot of changes already, including the actual definition of racism mm. itself. A Missouri woman says Merriam-Webster's dictionary will actually update the definition of the word racism based on a request that she made. Mm -hmm. Kennedy Mitchum says recent conversations about race she's had with people since the death of George Floyd sparked the idea to email the dictionary publisher last month. The 22-year-old recent college graduate expressed her point that the dictionary's current definition is inadequate that it overlooks broader issues of racial inequality.
So for more on, on what's, what's there right now, here's the definition in Merriam-Webster as it currently actually appears in the dictionary. There's, there's three different definitions that they have. The first one is a belief that race is the primary determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. Second definition is a doctrine or political program based on the assumption of racism and designed to execute its principles or a political or social system that's founded on racism. And the third definition in the dictionary, racial prejudice or discrimination. So I kept getting into little feuds and people kept trying to disprove my points that uh, I, what I was, experience was experiencing was racism. So I just had to email Merriam Webster because people kept using their definition to disprove it. They were saying, no, the definition of racism, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't go hand in hand. Those, that's not racism. What you're experiencing must be something else. So I had to reach out because they were misforming, mis mis informing people it was a lot of and she got it changed they agreed to change it to include more systemic aspects and that they would look into different literature that includes what people of color have to say about the term before publishing it Miriam Webster's editor told Mitchum the revision would not be happening without her persistence and there are people doing work most of us might not stop to consider the historians preserving the stories of this troubled year that we're living in Washington DC the Smithsonian has a moments of resilience project it's part of a growing global effort to gather photos artwork poetry and journal entries from everyday Americans now much of American history has been told through the lens of white men minority experiences like the slaves who helped build the White House or the Japanese Americans who endured in internment camps during World War II, all of that often glossed over or ignored. Historians are now working to make sure this moment is fully preserved from all viewpoints. Archives contain vast silences. They don't tell us the story of non-elites, folks outside the middle class, folks who aren't white. They may touch on them, they may hint at them, but we need to do a better job a worldwide repository built of a team of universities is gathering thousands of pieces, many showing the double impact of COVID-19 and civil unrest. Photographers are also picking up their cameras, and there's also an effort to capture conversations at the Library of Congress. And so I know um, also telling the story of Hawaii, right? Yeah. And uh, kind of the uh, racial um, institutions and kind of the growing kind of feelings mm -hmm. about what's happening with indigenous people yeah, here. You know, and we're wit witnessing history right now. I mean, 2020 is really going to go down uh, in the history books. I mean, we were just saying, you know, j something that happened just a couple months ago feels like years ago with yeah. everything that's gone on between coronavirus and uh, the movements that are happening mm -hmm. right now as well. So Important to document all of it. Well, time now, 7.44 a.m. The Black Lives Matter protests, meantime, are raising questions about long-running shows about police. Find out why TV executives are seeing the programs in a new light. Plus, no one knows when Pearl Harbor will reopen, but it's ready to welcome visitors back. Those stories and more coming up. Time now, 744. More news and weather coming up. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back after the break. Stay with us. This segment of KITV4 Island News is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Resilience. During the COVID-19 crisis, it's something our islands need more than ever. The resilience to lift each other up and despite great challenges, keep from getting down. That's why Bank of Hawaii Foundation is proud to be a major sponsor of the Hawaii Resilience Fund. You can help too by donating at hawaiiresiliencefund.org because resilience is who we are. Resilience is Hawaii. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Ree of the Hawaiian Eye Center. I enjoy working with my patients to make a real difference in their lives. My eyes before kind of blurry. Dr. Ree uh, fixed my eyes. I can read good. I feel good and I see them right. Thank you so much. Thank you to Dr. Ree. At Hawaiian Eye Center, we help our patients see better with personalized quality care. Come see us at Hawaiian Eye Center. You can't avoid growing older, but you can improve the way you go about it. I'm Diana Ko. When you make the most of your golden years, when you take care of yourself and your family, and when you appreciate what you have and who you are, you're aging well. Join Diana Ko Tuesday evenings at 5, 6, and 10 for stories of information and inspiration. 
Aging Well is sponsored by Island Mobility Solutions. For over 22 years, we have valued our commitment to your satisfaction. And that's why we're proud to present our new 120-day peace of mind guarantee. If you find a lower price on identical merchandise, Inspiration will refund you the difference. From our store to your door, we promise you the highest quality of customer care. Inspiration. 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 Inspiration Interiors. Peace, peace of, of mind, mind guarantee. guarantee. Imagine comfort, the comfort of stressless. Good morning, Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now, 7.47 a.m. Two popular police reality shows are being canceled as the protests against police brutality and excessive force continue to rock the nation. Yes, yeah, Steve Osinsami has more on why the long-running series Cops and now Live PD are being cut from the airwaves. For more than three decades, police officers on the hit show Cops have been entertaining Americans with high-speed chases, police arrests, and signature songs. Drug busts, alleged drunk drivers, all arrested on camera and reaching massive audiences. At its peak in the 90s, Cops was pulling in nearly 8 million viewers an episode. But times have changed, and on Tuesday, the Paramount Network decided the show was being canceled. Protests that have filled American streets in response to the death of George Floyd in police custody have television executives seeing the show in a different light. The long complaint is that the supposed hero police officers on the program are seen too often tracking down and arresting black Americans. And to some, it feels like sport. Well, it depicted uh, black communities as folks that needed to be controlled. Rashad Robinson is the president of a group called Color of Change. In 2013, they convinced executives at Fox Network to pull the show from the air after 25 seasons him, and then moved on to syndication. They went into some of the most targeted, the most exploited communities and brought cameras and put people on display. And then they made profit off of it with ever, out ever having to be accountable and now live PD like cops it was hugely popular the highest rated show on A&E and the network is saying the show will end in a statement A&E responded to the news saying going forward we will determine if there is a clear pathway to tell the stories of both the community and the police officers whose role it is to serve them the show ran for three hours every Friday and Saturday night with live cameras set up with police departments across the country we spoke with the sheriff of one of them last year who told us that the program made his officers local stars and helped improve relations with his community. I just knew that people needed to see what we see every day, not just a snapshot, but actually see the funny stuff, the dangerous stuff. The show took fire this week after it was revealed that their cameras were present during this deadly arrest last year in Austin, seen here in this police body camera video. The show was on hiatus and never aired the video. Television executives are now reevaluating their commitment to this kind of programming. This is a watershed moment for uh, networks and for TV creators who are reconsidering the role that TV about police plays in the way Americans understand the role of police in everyday life. All right, switching gears now to weather. This is a live look at Hilo Bay as the sun coming up over the big island. And Tom is uh, giving us a check on the weather. How's it looking? Yeah, so the sun is going to be uh, coming up, and it's going to be hot out there, but wind is the big story. So this is what you don't want to do when it's windy. This was actually me stand-up paddle boarding for the first time last week. Whoop! There I go. I think that was the most I was able to actually stand up. So when it's windy and choppy, not wanna, uh, you don't want to be like me. So And it's going to be like that again today as we look at your uh, forecast for today. So as we see right now, forecast winds. Look at those gusts in some areas. Already 21 miles per hour right now over on the windward side. And that's going to be the story of the day. 15 to 25 mile per hour gusts. So it's going to be nice and sunny, but that wind is going to make things a little choppy. The good news is it'll make things feel a little bit cooler, even though it's hot. But if you're a beginner at uh, surfing or stand-up paddleboarding, might want to watch it out. Uh, watch out for that a little bit. So uh, satellite radar, take a look. Um, as we sh just showed you, Hilo, uh, a little bit of clouds, a little bit of a system forming there, but it is going to be sunny a little bit later. Kauai, going to be a beautiful day. Highs in the 80s there over on uh, Kauai there. 
And uh, the big story, so surf, how's it looking out there? Uh, it's going to be a little bit choppy, but in terms of the actual wave size, one to three footers uh, on your north and west facing shores, two to four footers in the south, uh, east facing shores, four to six foot. But again, that uh, 15 to 25 mile per hour winds, that's going to make things uh, feel a little bit choppy as you're heading out there. So let's take a look at how things are shaping up heading into your week. So. Um, going to be kind of the same story as we head into your week. So pretty breezy uh, today and tomorrow, but look at that. Highs in the 80s. Looks pretty rough when you see a high of 89, but again, uh, those trade winds going to make things feel a little bit cooler. So, I, I mean, I've already mastered uh, stand-up paddleboarding, Annalisa, so I think we're, it's time for us to learn how to surf. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I'm going to go biking today at the Open Street Sunday on Kalakaua. So lots of exercise this weekend. Well, meantime, there's a new Raising Canes opening today in Mililani. It's the Chicken Finger Chain's third location in the state. The others opened over the past year near UH and in Hawaii Kai. Hungry customers can check out the restaurant at the town center of Mililani. It's open for drive through and takeout service only. And Oahu's offshore islands are back open with restricted access. You can visit, but there are state seabird sanctuaries, so you can't go near nesting areas or near monk, monk seals on the beach. Now, those islands are Moku Aoia or Goat Island in Laiai Bay, Popuia or um, Flat Island, and the Mokulua Islands off Kailua Beach, and Kapapa in Kanaohe Bay. Meanwhile, Pearl Harbor National Memorial doesn't yet have a reopening date, but they are ready to greet the public. So this weekend, the National Park Service and sailors and airmen from Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam are busy picking up litter and weeds, pressure washing the walkways, and touching up the area. They also made a special trip out to clean the USS Arizona Memorial. Oh, looking forward to that of course it's the 75th anniversary of the end Absol of world war ii yeah so. absolutely and of course uh, you know people at, 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 if nothing else really hoping that things will be back to normal mm -hmm. by december of course for uh, the pearl harbor anniversary so mm -hmm. hopefully things will be better all right well uh time now 753 the local paddling community is putting together a big food drive to help out families we'll let you know how you can help out plus tonight honolulu Hale will be illuminated in red in honor of a special holiday we'll tell you about that global occasion coming up next don't go away good morning hawaii we'll be right back This segment of KITV4 Island News is sponsored by Spectrum. This isn't a small business opening. You already had one of those. It's a reopening. Take two. And just in time. Because right now, people need coffee that tastes like coffee. And hair that doesn't look like that. They need someone who knows where those numbers actually go. They need you. And everything that made your business great from your first day one. Yeah, we've been knocked back on our heels, and it took a minute, but it still says florist, or repairs, or plumber over that door. And there are still customers who can't wait to walk through it. That light at the end of the tunnel? It's a workout that doesn't involve two bags of flour. It's a 20-foot tall inflatable guy saying, come on by. It's you and your small business, turning your community and the country around. One appointment, one customer, one thank you at a time. Small business is coming back. And Spectrum Business is giving every new customer one free month of Spectrum Business services to make sure it does. We're here for you, because you're here for all of us. Feel like getting back out there? Nissan is ready to help you with a bold, award-winning lineup and great offers. Kick off summer with a low $179 per month lease on Nissan Sentra. Or get no payments for three months. Plus, we'll cover your payments for up to two more months. My new normal? Fewer asthma attacks. Less oral steroids. Taking my treatment at home. Nucala is a once-monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala at home. Find your new normal with New Kala. This is Good Morning Hawaii.
Welcome back. Well, today is World Blood Donor Day. It's celebrated around the world to raise awareness about the importance of a safe blood supply and to thank life-saving donors. This year's slogan, Give Blood and Make the World a Healthier Place, is even more important right now in, uh, given this pandemic situation we're dealing with. Honolulu Hale will be lit red tonight in recognition of the holiday. Good to see, uh, good to see mm -hmm. that. It's important to uh, save lives there. And uh, meanwhile, today's uh, Oahu's paddling community is going to be organizing a massive food drive to help out residents in Papakolea. Yeah, the small community situated between Paoa and Manoa. Uh, volunteers say the goal is to feed 200 families for 1,500 people for a week. If you want to help out, donations can be dropped off this morning from 10 o'clock to noon at the Papakolea basketball court. And KITV4 is partnering with Helping Hands Hawaii to assist families impacted by COVID-19 by launching a giving campaign to raise funds for grocery store gift cards for families in need. You can go to KITV.com give for more information. And of course, our Living Room Live Aloha Together concert series airs at the new time and channel tonight. You can catch performances from artists like Kamuela Kahuano, Paula Fuga, and Mike Love at 5 o'clock on MeTV. So far, the series has helped raise more than $50,000 for various local agencies. And this week, we partnered with Helping Hands Hawaii. Funds raised will go towards our Ho'okupu campaign to buy groceries for families impacted by the COVID-19 layoffs. And as you mentioned earlier today, the first open street Sunday in the city and county of Honolulu, Kalakaua Avenue, going to be closed to drivers between Seaside and Kapahulu. So right now, let's take a live look. This is uh, Waikiki, where residents definitely taking advantage of that. It's uh, you know kind of nice to see it without uh, it being packed with tourists. Definitely want to go out there and enjoy that. Annalise is going to be out there uh, biking later yeah, today. With so Mayor Caldwell, so yeah, say so hello. See them, say hi. Um, that's going to be going on until noon. Meanwhile, we'll see you back for our next newscast. Aloha. Watch KITV4 Island News tonight at 10. Rick Kwan, weeknights on KITV4 Island News tonight at 10. Ho'okupu is a fundraiser through KITV4 and Helping Hands Hawaii. This program identifies starving families dealing with unemployment due to COVID-19. Please visit KITV.com slash give and donate today. Together, we can help feed Hawaii's families in need. How did Kellogg's combine crunchy oak clusters with a touch of honey, plump, juicy raisins, and tasty fiber into one delicious cereal? It took a lot of brainstorming. Get it? Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. Two scoops of delicious. As an essential business, Island Mobility Solutions provides safety and peace of mind for our kupuna. This is extremely important now that many find themselves complying with the stay-at-home, work-from-home initiative statewide. We retrofit and service customized equipment and home enhancements to assist our kapuna's daily activities. This includes stair lifts, car lifts, tub cutouts, and more. Call us today for a free estimate. We're all in this together. Have some home projects on your list? Whether it's a fix now or fix up down the road, count on Home Advisor's trusted local pros to get the job done right. It's easy to schedule, check prices, and pay for all your home projects. So get the Home Advisor app, and we'll do everything.